All right, here we go for Lucas Chess. Determine your calculating power, number three. Um, got an end game ish position going on here. We've got two rooks playing as black, two rooks and a knight versus two rooks and a bishop. And black has four pawns, white has four pawns. We have double ISOs on B and an ISO on D and G. And white has ISOs on D and G as well, but is not doubled on B. Instead, A3 and B2. So, what we're going to do here is see if we can make our knight um, maybe centralized or have a good outpost. Um, so looking at some spots for the knight, there aren't any real good ones yet. Maybe we could make one by playing d4. Um, we need to worry about our weak pawns on the b file at some point. We're in check right now, we're going to deal with that first. Um, the overall plan, definitely just going to try to hold on here. I don't think black has any advantage here. I think the, the advantage is on white's end. So looking here, uh, we need to get out of check. And we have basically three moves to do that. We could play king f6, king f8, or king g8. All three of which still protect on f7. So looking at king f6, if we play king f6 and white were to take, and we take on f7, everything seems to be okay. I don't think there's any purpose in uh, white, white taking the knight, just truthfully, because I think that, that bishop is going to be better than this knight. So swapping it is probably not going to be to white's advantage. So... Um, more than likely, let's look at king F set f8 first. Let's look at king f8, because I think we can probably dis discard that discard that move pretty quickly, or at least we should be able to. Let's see, king f8. Is there any benefit for white to playing rook h8, and then just repeating? Probably not. There's no real follow-ups. So, king f8. Rook takes king f7. Any of these three moves, it looks like white might just follow up with uh, rook takes rook and then the king winds up on f7. Although, possibly throwing in... No, there's no way to get the rook involved either because the e4 and f4 squares are guarded by black pawns. Uh, maybe a rook a4? And looking at rook a8, if there were something like uh, king f8, so say king f8, rook a4, threatening rook a8, I'm not sure that's too big a deal anyway. Rook takes, bishop takes. Um, so let's. Let's just assume that king f6 is going to be the best move, and I think it probably is. King f6, rook takes, and I'm, I'm assuming that white is going to want to trade off pieces and highlight this structural weakness as the difference in the game. So king f6, rook takes, king takes. And I'm now looking to see... how white goes about... Um, either forcing more trades or further attacking black's weak pawns. Could look at something like bishop c8 if the knight weren't in the way, so is there a way to chase around the knight? Not really. Maybe white wants to improve his king. So king f6, rook, king f6, rook takes, king takes, king e3. Looking to come to d4 and put some pressure on d5. So king e3 and black king now. Let's see where. Yeah. F king f6. Well, actually, the the white king won't be able to come there because of the knight. So what if we chop it, then play? and then come to d4. 
might be okay. So takes takes king um, king f6 chops rook e6 check and then king d4 or king e6 king d3 king e5 looks better for black than rook takes uh, the rook won't be as active but we're holding the king back in that line I'm not sure if white really wants to chop that knight or not probably does. I think fewer pieces on the board is going to favor white, but white wants to make his king as active as possible, maybe get it to d4. So let's go ahead and enter this line and see how we do. All right, so king f6, rook takes rook, king takes rook, king e3, followed by king f6, bishop takes knight, King ta uh, takes bishop. Oh, the king was already on e3, so the king can go ahead and get to d4, right? I did play d2 to e3, yes. So now, and that looks to be pretty good for white. But, you know, most of that is kind of forced for black. Okay, so we're going to check the variation and see how we did. Analyzing move G7 to F6. This is getting out of check. And it says 100 out of 100, and it's still off the screen, no matter what I do. Get it just on the screen for you. There we go. 100 out of 100, so I did well so far. Three 100s in a row. And we go for four. Four in a row. Five in a row. Hooray for me so far, huh? Six in a row. Seven in a row. Maybe this was just all easy. Eight in a row. 25,500 points. Look at this, guys. And I did it on video so everybody can pat me on the back. All right, guys, thanks for watching. That was uh, Determining Calculating Power number three, and by far my highest score. See you later.